PlayStation Vita has been in the market close to five years since its release in Japan back in 2011. This is Sony's most powerful handheld to date with a quad-core processor, a marvelous OLED display, and a still impressive LED screen on the PlayStation Vita Slim, dual analog sticks, both touchscreen and a rear touchpad, the Vita packs a punch like no other handheld to date. With those specs on a handheld, it provides an impressive catalog of games, both retail and PlayStation Network titles, that display their beauty and creativity onto the handheld. In today's video, we'll go over my top 25 favorite PlayStation Vita games to date that I personally enjoyed the most that I could not stop putting down. This video was sponsored by Bananatic.com. Want to earn free Steam codes, CSGO skins, PlayStation Network cards, Xbox Live Points, Amazon gift cards, among other cool prizes just for playing free games? That's right, play fun and addicting games, download apps and games to earn free credit known as bananas to redeem these amazing prizes. Click the link below to sign up and find more information about the website and start winning those free games. At number 25, we have Wipeout 2048. This was one of the first games to be released on launch for the PlayStation Vita. When you start playing this game, you'll be mesmerized with just how beautiful and gorgeous the graphics are, running in a stunning 60 frames per second. With the PlayStation Vita having a touchscreen, rear touchpad, and motion sensing, it utilizes those functions to give users a new racing experience. The game is set in the near future of 2048 where you drive in an anti-gravity racing league. You compete in different speed classes and ultimately want to become the best in the league by coming in first place or near to that to advance and compete in other racing challenges. The online multiplayer portion builds on the campaign and very similar to where you get to compete with other racers online to be the top tire which unlocks other missions and content for you to complete. The game is also cross by which means you can play it on PlayStation 3 and on the PlayStation Vita for the price of one. With additional DLC available for the game there's a lot of races and challenges to be completed in Wipeout 2048. At number 24, we have Borderlands 2, a console port that was released on the PlayStation Vita with additional DLC and extra content make this a sweet deal, especially if you never played Borderlands. Now, the game on the console was heavily claimed and received by a lot of users and reviewers, but the PlayStation Vita port did lack a bit of what the console counterpart had, and that included having glitches and minor gameplay errors that really just kind of became a little bit bothersome in time. Since this was the first time playing a Borderlands game, I was still pleased with the gameplay and story. The game starts five years after the events of Borderlands 1, where you have four vault hunters that were guided to check the planet of Pandora, where it was said that there was a mysterious alien structure contained ancient and exotic technology. Through the adventures, your nemesis Handsome Jack rules the inhabitant of Pandora and everything in it and wants to open Pandora's second vault and unleash the warrior. It is up to you to essentially stop his wrongdoings. The whole premise of the game is for you to go ahead and experience and explore Pandora, essentially stopping his wrongdoings. The game does go a little bit more in depth than that in the story, and it does have an online multiplayer, which is very luck last compared to the console port because they could only be played until with other one person and it's always difficult to find a match so i mean it, it, it really lacks in that category because there's not a lot of people playing it online but it does have a nice variety of dlc included within the game now if you've been wanting to play borderlands 2 especially on the go then the playstation vita does do a good job in being able to provide that kind of same experience the console did Fortunately, there are some glitches and bugs that kind of prevent it to be number one. Considering it's a pretty good massive game, it still has a lot of DLC content for free within this bundle. So it just depends on how you want to look at it. But it's a great game. I truly enjoyed it. It's a nice little FPS game with a lot of humor and a lot of adventures. At number 23, we have Mortal Kombat. While the PlayStation Vita does not offer a lot of fighting games, NetherRealm Studios did an amazing job importing the console version of the game onto the handheld. The principal gameplay and mechanics are what you expect from a Mortal Kombat game or a fighting game for that matter, it being a 2.5D style fighting game with beautiful graphics, 60 frames per second, utilizing the touchscreen and the motion sensing for mini games and also to kind of like wipe out blood during gameplay. Mortal Kombat has been known to having outrageous over the top combo cutscenes, which by just wiping the touchscreen, you can go ahead and kind of reveal those, which is all still intact on the Vita. The story follows the events of Mortal Kombat, Armageddon, where both forces of light and darkness have been wiped out, and the only god of thunder, Raiden, the outworld emperor, Shao Kang, remain to present their parties. With the division of them both, it creates tension which creates a tournament to reveal which side and character is the best. Like any other Mortal Kombat game, it remains as a fighting game where you select a character and you climb the ladder to ultimately fight the last boss. With the added bonus of mini games and random challenges to derive away from the fighting, Mortal Kombat offers a lot on the go. At number 22, we have Final Fantasy X and X2. Final Fantasy franchise has been on the PlayStation platform for such a long time and one of the PlayStation 2 classic gems makes a return onto the Vita in glorious HD. The HD remaster contains both Final Fantasy X and its sequel, X2. The first game follows the journey of a teen named Titus who is transported to the world known as Spira and after encountering a creature known as Sin. 
Later on, the guardians of the summoner, Yuna, which is protecting her own pilgrimage, is to defeat Sin as well. The plot story goes more in depth than just that, which proceeds on the sequel, and the gameplay relies on the traditional of turn-based battle that allows players to swap party members to mid-combat, so very similar to what Final Fantasy players are used to. The Vita doesn't have a lot of Final Fantasy games on it, so the HD remaster takes on the PlayStation 2's classic and does a beautiful job importing that experience onto the handheld. Me personally, I'm not a big Final Fantasy fan, but this game was still pretty fun and addicting when I had it on the PlayStation Vita. At number 21, we have Gravity Rush. The game is an action adventure game that the thing that stands out the most is the motion sensing and the gravity feature on Gravity Rush that creates a dynamic gameplay experience on the game. The story begins in the floating city known as Hexville, where Cat, the main protagonist, has lost her memory. She later encounters a black cat that gives her special abilities used to protect people from the threat of a gravity storm. She ends up actually teaming up with her arch enemy to go ahead and take back Hexville from the mayor who controls it. It's a very unique and well presented game and once again the main attraction I had was its different approach in the gameplay design where gravity can be used for your advantage to progress through the world and to fight foes. Being able to utilize the motion sensing was a different approach than usually traditional games do but I still found it to be very enjoyable and Gravity Rush was able to pull it and actually make it still a fun experience. I highly recommend this game, especially if you love new and creative games. At number 20, we have Freedom War, a third-person battle action game that features local and online multiplayer with the additional of cooperative and competitive for up to eight total players. The story takes place on Earth in the year, and get this, 102014, that's the year, which is just woof crazy and mother earth is essentially on life support and is on the brink of ruin the humans that inhabit earth are called panopticons and struggle to research how to be able to live on the surface once more what this means is that there's criminals that are serving sentences that have to provide labor for the state in order to receive their freedom once more with overpopulation limited resources and receiving time for not doing as the government says it creates a lot of tension within the world it's a very engaging game that has you competing a lot of tasks within and around the world a nice third person game with online multiplayer being its strongest point Freedom Wars gives players a lot of content, especially if you enjoy third-person battle games with a futuristic theme. It was a really cool game. I truly enjoyed it. If you want more information about this game and kind of like a gameplay on it, my boy Jammer, link in the description, has made tons of Freedom War videos, so check him out when you have the chance. At number 19, we have Rayman Legends, one of my favorite platformer games on the PlayStation Vita. Rayman Legends is an underrated game in franchise as a whole that I feel deserves a lot more attention. Easy to use controllers, great gameplay, and beautiful art style graphics all while doing in 16 frames. There's nothing Nothing to hate about this game. Rayman Legends was released on the consoles and the Vita version looks identical to the PlayStation 3 edition. Furthermore, it has additional levels and exclusivity for the Vita's touchscreen capabilities which makes it even more attractive and interesting. The story starts after the events of Rayman Origins, since then the main characters have been sleeping for over a century, very lazy people right there, and during that time Bubble Creamer's nightmare grew into strength. Rayman and his friends are awakened by their friend Murphy and informs them that 10 princesses have been captured and it is up to you and your friends to rescue them. I mean the very cool dynamic of this game is not only is it like very traditional platformer game but it's doing it in its own creative way having different characters having different abilities using the touch screen and rear touchpad for achieving these levels and the fact that it just looks beautiful on the PlayStation Vita it's just it's just an amazing game it's a game that if you love platformers or have been meaning to play a Rayman game then Rayman Legends is the way to go at number 18, we have Rogue Legacy, a 2D platformer game where you travel through procedural generated castles to uncover the secrets of your cursed heritage. It means that you play as one character, so you have the opportunity to do so, but when that character dies, then that's the end of it. The cool thing about the game is that there's a lot of them that spawn really frequently, so if character number one dies, you can go ahead and continue the fight within character number two. The unfortunate side is that they do not retain the same powers and abilities that the previous character did, so you'll kind of have to start from scratch, but the cool thing is it has this kind of implementation that once character number one dies then that's the end of that legacy essentially and you'll have to go ahead and continue the quote-unquote legacy on the second character which is a really cool and an impressive kind of technique that they end up bringing to the game rogue legacy is overall an impressive game it's a lot of fun it's a really cool art style game and an awesome soundtrack and it's a game you should definitely pick up on the go at number 17, we have Sound Shapes. Immediately, you'll be introduced to the soundtrack of the game, which is truly amazing, which plays into how the 2D platformer game played. The main objective of the game is to get from point A to point B, which the further you progress gets a little bit harder. But the real cool, neat feature about the game is that once you jump, it really interacts within the musical notes, which is something that I've never really seen at any other game. So that literally translates into when you jump, it actually plays into the soundtrack being played in the background. So the more you jump, kind of plays within that. So it's a really cool thing that once you go ahead and proceed within the level and actually accomplish something, the soundtrack, the song actually changes in the back. So it's a really cool neat feature that I've never seen any other game done before. So it's amazing. 
And the really cool thing about Sound Ships is that it actually incorporates artwork from different artists like Pixel Jam, Cappy, and Super Brothers. And the music comes from producers like I Am a Robot, Proud, Jim, and Dead Mouse. The game also has a feature where you can go ahead and create your own levels and also modify the music soundtrack to your own levels, which is really cool. And the best part of it, it has that cross buy, so you can go ahead and continue the adventures on PS3, PS4, and on the PlayStation Vita. At number 16, we have Velocity 2X. Velocity 2X is a shoot 'em up game that's been described to be like the classic Sonic game with fast paced elements. With teleportation being a major component to outspawning enemies, Velocity 2X is both a vertically scrolling game with side scrolling action where you can go ahead and solve puzzles, fight against enemies, and move forward in very creative and futuristic levels. The game's story starts when you've been abducted by a race of hostile enemies where you must quickly use reflexes and teleportation powers to free prisoners and to go back home. Throughout the progression of the game, the game swaps from top down vertical shooting to a side scrolling action game, giving away a new dynamic feel that you know, gives its own flavor and taste to 2X. With over 50 levels and a great soundtrack and the endless discoveries, Velocity 2X is an amazing game that offers a lot, especially on the Vita. A 2D action adventure sandbox game that features exploration, crafting, construction, and combat with a variety of creatures with the procedural generated 2D world. Sounds a bit familiar, right? So the concept is, we you know, obviously kind of similar to that of Minecraft with survival being the key instinct within the game but having its own kind of twist and unique style to it. You start off the game with very basic tools like a pickaxe, a sword, and an axe, all used for combat, woodcutting, and mining. You use those tools to essentially get around the 2D world, which is divided into different zones, each with their own take to find more essential resources for your tools and to improve upon their skill. Now, exploring isn't all that easy. You'll have to go ahead and dig and make your own path to find hidden items. You'll have to encounter monsters and enemies like slimes, zombies, demon eyes, and various of other enemies. Game also offers different boss battles that have different combat skills and upon defeat you'll be able to receive a rare item and in-game currency and those bosses have special spots you can go ahead and summon them and have needed tools to do so. There's a lot to do in Terraria, a lot of exploration, a lot of crafting, a lot of just doing anything essentially in this 2D procedural world and it's a lot of fun especially on the go with a lot of cool upgrades and just endless amount of fun. At number 14, we have the Joe Danger series. The game was made from Hello Games, the same team that brought in No Man's Sky, which I can assure you is not boring, but uh, don't don't tell Gareth Bourne I said that. It's just a little secret. Don't tell him. <laughs> Joe Danger is a side-scrolling game which incorporates the racing and platform elements where you can go ahead and play as a once-loved and respected daredevil where you navigate through an exciting plethora of courses from time limited races to courses that require completing objectives like collecting coins and getting the high score by landing tricks. Joe Danger 2 follows a platform structure from the previous one but now that you have gained the respect from the fans in the industry you're now a stuntman in a Hollywood set. It's a new theme and a new location but the main formula and concept of performing tricks, beating high scores and collection of stars are all founded in the sequel. Overall Joe Danger the series is a fun and addictive series that takes elements from Mario and Sonic games that I truly truly love and have their own lovable and cartoony art style that works well. <laughs> Unlike No Man's Sky, ho <laughs> ho! At number 13, we have Pixel Junk Shooter Ultimate. Originally, the Pixel Junk game was released on the PlayStation 3, and a couple of Pixel games later became a well known and loved series with an increase of levels, amazing soundtrack, and a perfect art design. Pixel Junk Shooter Ultimate is a twin stick shooter that has over 150 levels. Bring another player with some co-op action, upgrade your powers throughout the completion of the level, and finding these resources takes those skills online with cross-game battles that allows you to play people against the PlayStation Vita or the PlayStation 4, and the overall dynamic puzzles in the level is truly a big standing point for the game. The story is simple, which really isn't the main attraction of the game, but it's about saving scientists and uncovering the mysteries of an ill-fated research trip that requires you to study and manipulate your environment by blasting through a variety of levels from rock and ice to unleashing foods of water and engaging in water and lava levels. The game will definitely throw in obstacles and make it for a fun and dynamic game. At number 12 we have Assassin's Creed 3 Liberation. One of the few open world action adventure games on the PlayStation Vita, Assassin's Creed 3 was a spin-off of the AC3 game which, fun fact, actually runs on the same engine that Assassin's Creed 3 does. So things like movement and climbing look and feel similar. The Vita's touchscreen and rear touchpad are utilized for combat and pickpocketing which make a cool little dynamic within the game. The game starts with the protagonist Avalon set in New Orleans near the French and Indian War where at that point New Orleans was controlled by a Spanish government. The citizens end up fighting about the transition of power which leads to a lot of conflict of interest with the French and the Spanish and the citizens where Avalon, the main protagonist, discovers a deal that occurred which overall led to killing betrayal of transition of power in New Orleans. The game has a lot of combat gameplay picking fights and running away from your enemies and doing so by climbing and running on rooftops. The open world detail allows for different hideouts, secret items to be found, and finding ways to evade the enemy. The game was done really well, and if you're an Assassin's Creed fan and want more Assassin's Creed action, Liberation is the way to go, especially 
on the PlayStation Vita, but if you don't have it, that's totally fine because they also have the HD collection of Assassin's Creed 3. So you have different options if you're a big AC fan. At number 11, we have Need for Speed Most Wanted. Another genre that the Vita lacks in quantity are racing games. Getting back to the Need for Speed roots, Most Wanted is an open world racing game with blending Need for Speed and Burnout elements together to make a remarkable game. You can free roam to various spots in the world where you can go ahead and compete in sprint races which involve going from point A to point B, circuit races that consist of traditional races which have from 2-3 to three laps, and speed runs that involve driving through a course as fast as possible. With the completion of the races you gain new cars, improvements and unlock more races. Need for Speed on the PlayStation Vita looks very similar to the PlayStation 3 counterpart and it's really impressive considering that you know each have their own special limitations but the PlayStation Vita was able to go ahead and get a near perfect most wanted port and even with that it still is a lot of fun. With the same features, cars and races, it's a racing game but overall an amazing game to take on the go. At number 10 we have Child of Light, a platformer role playing game that takes place in the mythical land of Lemuria. The game plays a side scroller with role playing elements when it comes to increasing stats over the time through battle. So the active time battle system is very similar to what you'll find in a Final Fantasy game and you can even control up to two characters at the same time and at times you can go ahead and get three enemies show up so it creates very interesting battles for sure. The story starts with Aurora, the main character that mysteriously finds herself in the land of Lemuria and mysteriously was taken away from her home. In order to get back home she has to bring back the sun, the moon and the stars whom are held captive by the Queen of the Night. Through her quest of doing so befriends a firefly who helps Aurora around the world to ultimately get to the Queen of Light and everything about the game is just truly amazing. The art design to the character development the soundtrack it truly just completes the artwork of the whole game it's more than anything it's an experience and this comes from someone that's not a big rpg fan uh any sort of like kind of final fantasy games i mean i'll play them but i'm not the biggest fan and child of light definitely definitely did a good job and i truly enjoyed this game at number nine we have little big planet one of the playstation's precious gems and overall fun game has a playstation vita edition and i have to say that little big planet on the vita it's the best of both worlds. Little Big Planet is a puzzle platformer game that is well known for its user generated levels that make this game stand out even more. Like the previous titles in the series, you control the main character, Sackboy, where you go from point A to point B with a variety of puzzles, obstacles to complete. Beyond the traditional jumping and grabbing objects to advance in the game, the Vita edition adds new elements like minigames that have you switching the PlayStation Vita vertically and use the touchscreen and rear touchpad to complete those levels. Little Big Planet does offer multiplayer and it's very similar to the console counterpart where you can go ahead and search up and play user generated levels and also create your very own. With the Vita's touchscreen, it makes setting and overall creating levels oh so easy. The grand Little Big Planet community allows for creating and sharing levels oh so easy once you complete the story, which gives a lot, a lot of value to the game, especially when you can go ahead and create and play other people's levels. And a lot of them are even more funner and interesting and just over the top at times and overall it's just a beautiful game there's a lot to do on little bit planet from creating to playing i highly recommend playing this game at number eight we have Terraway. first of all media molecule is overall an amazing developing company and little bit planet is the franchise well known from them and Terraway takes that creative aspect to a new level the game being a third person platformer adventure game with a beautiful arts and crafts art style that shows the team's vision and creativity. Since it's on the PlayStation Vita, it utilizes the front-facing camera, the touchscreen, and the rear touchpad to add a new dynamic to the game. You use these features to advance and discover new things in the world of Tearaway. The main premise of this game is that you try to guide the messenger into trying to bring you the unique message because you essentially play from above, but you also can control the messenger. So there will be obstacles that will require you to use the rear touchpad or the touchscreen to kind of get out of the way so you can go ahead and advance within the world. You might be asking yourself, what exactly is in this message that is so unique and so, like, you know, important? Well, you'll have to find out and play. Or you can go ahead and Google it if you want. Regardless, you'll just have to play Tearaway to really experience the creativity, arts, and craft style that Media Molecule was able to bring onto Tearaway. Tearaway is just one of my favorite games on the PlayStation Vita. I truly recommend this. It utilizes all the PlayStation Vita's features, and just it's just a fun and exciting game. It really is that. So just definitely pick it up if you haven't. At number 7, we have Minecraft. By now, everyone knows about the Minecraft phenomena, whether you're a big fan of Minecraft, a Minecraft YouTuber, which I still have to uh, work up and wrap up my series on the PlayStation Vita, so uh, give me some days. I got you, I got you. To someone who is sick and tired of the sandbox game, Minecraft has made a huge impression in the gaming industry, with its very simple design that's made Notch $2.5 billion richer, so uh, good for you, Notch. Good for you. 
The game needs no big introduction, but for those that need a refresher, Minecraft started on a PC as a sandbox game where you are put in the middle of a 3D procedural generated world with limited instructions as to what your quest is. Your main mission is to survive, discover, and essentially create. The game was then released onto consoles, where in 2014 was released on the PlayStation Vita. And believe it or not, a Minecraft on the PlayStation Vita is the highest selling Vita game of all time as of this recording. So, uh, hey, it's uh, a lot of people seem to like it on the Vita. PlayStation Vita Edition is that of the PlayStation 3 and the Xbox 360 with the same skins and themes ready to be used for your disposal on your worlds, both creative and survival. You can also go ahead and type generated seeds for specific worlds, and just like the console counterparts, it gets a lot of updates. So the new modes that it has is Battle Mode, which is similar to Hunger Games, and the Tumble Mode, similar to Spleef. There's also connectivity with the PlayStation 3 edition of it, where you can go ahead and upload and download maps created on either system via the Minecraft and PlayStation Network Cloud Drive. It also has a cross-buy feature where you can go ahead and buy either the PlayStation 3 or the PlayStation Vita edition of it and have it ready on either system. So it's really cool and continue the creativity of being able to play it on the go as well. It's a fun and simple game and I truly enjoy Minecraft on the Vita. At number six, we have guacamole. Uh, fun fact, guacamole is like the only good thing I know how to make. So, uh, hey, if y'all looking for some guac skills, I got you on that one. Anyways, talking about the game, guacamole is an action platformer game that draws inspiration from traditional Mexican culture and folklore, which is evident with the art style and the dialogue in the game. The story begins in a small village in Mexico where Juan, a humble farmer who has love interest with the president's daughter, is kidnapped by the evil Charo skeleton named Carlos. Juan trying to stop this gets killed and keep in mind this is just like the beginning of the game so he literally tried to save the daughter and then boom dies like that's <laughs> that is how you start a game. When Juan winds up in the land of the dead a mysterious luchador named Tostada which is a dumb name if you ask me gives Juan a mysterious mask that transforms him into a powerful luchador and brings him back to life. And that's when the game actually starts. Your main mission of the game is to find the president's daughter and you'll go through a platform of obstacles, defeat enemies, gain skills, to better your combat, battle bosses, to rescue the love of your life. It's like essentially like a Mario game, but instead you play as a luchador instead of a plumber. So, <laughs> But other than that, the soundtrack, the art style, the really cool kind of like niche that it has definitely makes Guacamole stand out and it's a fun game overall. At number five, we have the Hotline Miami series. So, okay, uh, when I made the top 15 PlayStation Vita videos a couple months back, I called Hala Miami a trilogy. Like the whole trilogy, it's both games, I love them. And still get comments correcting me like, hey, Fever, <laughs> it's not a trilogy, you do know that, right? Which, um, I, yeah, I, I do, I, I just, I don't know, I really don't know what happened that day. Anyways, the Hala Miami series, the Hala Miami series is composed of the first Hala Miami in Hala Miami 2, wrong number, and this indie game is literally one of my favorite games of all time, I, I'm not exaggerating when I say that. Hala Miami is a fast-paced top-down shooter where you go through level set in a 1989 Miami using a variety of guns to kill enemies, and advance further in the game with top-notch and very addictive soundtrack that adds to the experience, which I find myself actually listening to the soundtrack on Spotify from time to time, so it's a really good soundtrack, check it out. The game starts with the protagonist, Jack and Biker, who receive calls instructing them to commit mass massacres against the local Russian mafia. Story elements of the first game give the player a blurry and very limited story as to who you are and why you're killing so many people and who exactly is calling you. That story is then carried on to the second game revealing a bit more information about your background, having you relive events before the initial year of 1989. Overall, this is one of my favorite indie games of all time. The fast-paced combat, the action that goes on, and the beautiful soundtrack that really composes the whole game together. Hala Miami 2 and 1, which I set that backwards, I have no idea why I said that, um, is one of my favorite, favorite games. And I say that when you play it on the PlayStation, you really get a better experience, especially when you listen to headphones on it. So, Hala Miami, you get my applaud. You're the best game ever, and I applaud the uh, developers on this one. At number four, we have Uncharted Gold and Abyss. One of my all-time favorite series on the PlayStation made an impression and fun appearance on the best handheld of all time. Uncharted Gold and Abyss is an action-adventure platformer game that takes place sometime before the original Uncharted Drake's Fortune game that came out in 2007. You relive the events and get more acquainted with Drake and Sully, the main protagonists of the series, as you explore the jungles of Panama to uncover the temple hidden within. But unfortunately, like every other story, you're not the only one exploring the Central America part. Jason Dante is your rival explorer with more wealth to have an army actually try to kill you on site so you can obtain the prized possessions inside the temple. If you ever played an Uncharted game before, it's the exact same formula where you jump, climb, shoot, fight enemies, discover gems throughout the progression of the game. The game utilizes the Vita's features like touchscreen to climb, motion sensing for balancing and sniping enemies. The game plays like an Uncharted game, without a doubt. With its top-notch graphics, combat weapon options, witty humor, and orchestrated soundtrack that makes this game a spectacular game on the go. At number three, we have Danganronpa 1 and 2. This game, where do I begin with this game? Well, first off, it's a Japanese visual novel graphic adventure game. So if you ever played Heavy Rain or a Telltale game where the game is more story driven as opposed to gameplay wise, then that's the best way to kind of describe Danganronpa in that series. 
The first game starts with an average student named Mikado selected to join Hope's Peak Academy, which ends up actually losing his conscience and finds himself trapped inside the school with 14 other students. And this is where all the fun begins, because you'll end up actually meeting a very lovable sadistic remote control teddy bear named Monokuma, and says that there is no escape from school and the only way to graduate would be the fresh blood of one dead student and get away with it. This starts an old dialogue war in trying to figure out who committed the crime, and together as a jury must convict the murderer. If guessed correctly, everyone gets to leave but the murderer. If guessed incorrectly, everyone gets executed but the accuser does not. So it makes a very interesting story. The second installment has the same premise but takes place in a tropical island. The game is a twisted dark humorous theme that makes this game all that much lovable and very interesting and dark and I actually truly enjoyed it. There's a lot of dialogue within this game so if you don't necessarily enjoy those type of games this might not be for you but if you're willing to kind of like see through the story and be able to kind of interact with these characters and learn more information about it with some you know humor on the side as well uh, this game is definitely an easy pickup. At number 2 we have Killzone Mercenary. With dual analog sticks you'd expect more FPS games from the Vita, right? I mean you would just assume. Um, unfortunately there's only a couple of handful of games. Uh, Killzone Mercenary is actually one of my favorite favorite FPS games and even Vita games of all time because it actually is done properly on the Vita. This is the fifth game in the series that takes place through key events and locations between Killzone games that follows the story of Aaron Danner, a mercenary hired by the ISA. The game will take you places from Vecta to Helgen, in comparison to the previous installments where you were to be fighting with the ISA, you'll actually be in some missions helping out for the Helgen, depending on the contract you take because the main mission for you is to make more money regardless of fighting what side is right or wrong. This is really cool because this is the first time Guerrilla Games has offered that kind of insight of being able to play as the Helgen or being able to help with them. And it's something that was requested by a lot of fans, so it's kind of cool that they actually did this on the Killzone Mercenary. The missions take around 30 minutes to complete a piece, and they're around 9 in total, so you'll be playing this game for at least 4 to 5 hours. The game uses the touchscreen and rear touchpad to reload and to melee attack your opponent. The game also offers online multiplayer, which is still pretty active, where you can play in 3 different modes. Mercenary Warfare, which is a free-for-all mode. Guerrilla Warfare, which is a team-based deathmatch. And Warzone, which is a team match where you go head-to-head -to, -head to compete in different missions from claiming spots to regular deathmatch, which adds a nice little online dynamic. Multiplayer has 8 maps to choose from and a decent gun loadout with some customizations for your weapons and kill streak rewards. Overall the game is not only the best FPS game on the PlayStation Vita but easily top 5 PS Vita games of all time because it's done so tremendously good. The graphics, the sounds, the online multiplayer experience, it really is a truly gem on the Vita. And at number 1 we have drum roll please. We have Persona 4 Golden. So we covered almost all the genres available on the PlayStation Vita, all with their unique niche that makes them remarkable and fun for the PlayStation Vita. But the game I once never really saw myself playing or really invest a lot of time actually caught me off surprise I being Persona 4. I've never played any of the previous iterations of the series, but it was a game I kept on getting recommended by friends and YouTuber friends telling me, hey, Fever, you have to play this game. I know you don't like JRPG games, but listen, 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 you have to play this game. And sure enough, I caved in. It was like on sale for 20 bucks or something at the time. At first, it was like, eh, whatever. But then soon enough, when I really got hooked into the game, like just like an hour in, I'm like, oh, wow, this is this is more fun than I thought. Game's plot follows the footsteps of Persona 3 released on the PSP that takes place in rural Japan in a small town with high-end schools and a shopping districts. Overall, it's a very nice spot to live in. You play as the main protagonist who recently moved from a large city and now you're living in a small town with your uncle and cousin for a year because your parents are actually working abroad. The change takes a little bit for you to settle in with the town and like just the new location you live in. But sure enough, you end up going to the high school and you make friends. You make friends with Yosuku, a clumsy and quirky character, Chai, an energetic girl with an interest in martial arts, and Yokiku, a calm and redefined girl. So the change from a big city to a small town takes a while for you to kind of settle in with the town, the surrounding, the fact that you're living with your uncle and your cousin, and you know, like, okay, this is a brand new kind of environment for me. This sets the tone of the game where you and your friends are out to kind of discover who killed, who committed these murders, and by doing so, accidentally enter the TV world where you encounter Teddy. Teddy allows them to travel freely from the TV to the real world and discover more information about the murderers and the possible murderer, but also gain persona abilities. The connection you make with the main character and the characters in the story and your friends and all that stuff really just makes this game more of an experience than just a game. So again, this is one of those games I did not see myself ever playing, but I was so happy that I was told by many friends, hey, you have to check it out. And once I got addicted to the actual game and the story element, I was just like, okay, this is my game, okay? Because I was spending so many hours on this game because it's quite frankly an addicting game because you want to find out what happens next. For everyone out there, you must definitely pick this one out. Even if you're not a JRPG fan, which, you know, myself, I really wasn't. Uh, Persona 4 Golden is that exception, I would say. Uh, it's a really a fun game. It, there's a lot of story that goes into it, a lot of character development. 
I truly did enjoy this game and I would recommend it to anyone on the PlayStation Vita. So this wraps up the top 25 PlayStation Vita games of all time. It was a little bit difficult to kind of compile that because there's a lot of cool, amazing games on the PlayStation Network to retail. There's a lot of games to be played. With that being said, make sure to comment down below if you want to enter the giveaway. Comment down below what's your favorite PlayStation Vita game of all time or your top five list or something like that. And I'll definitely catch you guys on the next one.